in this one we are going to go ahead and set up JWT authentication and also log in our users and give them access tokens and refresh tokens. Now if you are new to token authentication, so when you are making a REST API like we are doing here, it is intended to be consumed by different types of clients. So we can have an app that maybe is a Chrome extension, an Android app, an iOS app, a front-end app like a React app. So authenticating across all those different types of clients calls for a solution that is not session-based. Because by default, we can use sessions to track which user is logged in, when they log out, on what they can access. But that would not work if we are going to like have a mobile app. So the approach that we take in that scenario is to implement token-based authentication where whenever a user has a correct login on our server, we give them a token that they can use to make calls so that we can identify which user it is depending on the token that is being sent to us. Now, previously, the way we would implement this is we would create like a, a token stable where we have like a user and their tokens. But most recently, we have a new standard called JWT. Now, JWT allows us to create these tokens without having to maintain a database table for these tokens and their users. Now, JWT does this by using encryption techniques that are based on a secret key. So with a secret key, we can be able to encode users' information into a token. And then when that token comes back, we can decrypt it using a secret key. And then we can tell which user it is without having to make a call to a database. So to implement this, we have different libraries that implement this. We can go ahead and implement it from scratch using the, the PyJWT module which is an official way to interact with JWT from Python. But that will call for a lot of work. So that means we have to, to do almost everything ourselves. So some packages have been developed in response to making this process really easy. And the one we are going to be using is Flask JWT Extended. So this allows us to almost do all the use cases we might have, like working with refresh tokens, revoking tokens. So we're going to be installing this. So I'm going to go to the installation and we are going to need to install, we are going to need to do pip install first JWT extended. So I'm going to go to our terminal, then I will stop the server and run pip install this. So to set it up, we are going to go to our app because we are going to set it up with our app. Then we are going to go to JWT extended, then we want to import JWT manager. So once we have the JWT manager, then the next thing you are going to need to do is come and set it up with our app. So over here, we can just do JWT manager and then set it up with our app such that when we return it, such that when we return it, it knows that JWT was configured now. One thing I mentioned before was that JWT authentication bases on a secret key to encrypt and decrypt tokens. So we're going to need a way to tell it about our secret key. I'm going to go to our Flask M file. So Flask M. So here we're going to have export JWT secret key. So I'm going to set it to secret key. And like I said, and like I said, for, for very crucial information like this, we want to put them in a .env. But right now I'm putting them here just so people on Windows don't get the same issues. But if you can put them in .env, be sure to source, in the, to source .env in your terminal just so it gets updated and picks it up. But for now, this should work fine. So once we have this in our init, we also need to pass it. So out so down here, we can pass JWT, JWT secretly and we'll set it to OS environ get so we'll be getting JWT secret key like this so the value here can be really anything but you want to make sure it is it is very secured so make sure it's, it doesn't really leak to version control and it should only be known to your server so once we have that now we can go ahead and start to work with the logging in a user I'm gonna go down here and we, we, we we create another route to log in a user. So we're gonna have app.post. So app.post will detect when a user is going to slash login. So when a user goes to slash login, we are going to have a function to handle that. So we'll have login. But to log in a user, we're going to first get the email and then the password that they are sending us. Now we can do that by doing email. It's gonna be request JSON email. Let's also get the password. So you can just do password. So one thing I want to do here is instead of us doing this, so instead of us using this syntax here, we're just going to use a, a get. So get allows us to specify a fallback value if the user didn't, didn't actually send the email. But in our case, since these are the keys, so these are the keys that our frontend should send, and this usually is handled by developers, we can still rely that these are always going to be there. So here, let's make sure 
So here, let's make sure we have a default value, just so our application doesn't crash. So the first thing we're gonna check is if the user with this email exists in our DB. So we're gonna have user equals user dot query. Then we want to filter by email. Then we want to do email equals email. Then we want to do dot first. So we can check if we have this user. Now we can check their their password. So we can just have like is pass correct. So for the password, remember our password. Remember the password we have in a DB is encrypted, but the one the user is giving us is is in plain text. So for us to be able to match those two, we are going to use this function here we imported called check password hash. So down here, we can just do check password hash. So check, pass, check password hash takes in the hash. So the hash is gonna be the user's password from DB. So that is gonna be user password because in a DB it is a hash. And we are gonna be checking it against the password, which is now in this case, is this password that the user is giving now. So now we can check if this password is correct. So we can do if, is password correct then that means that the user's authentication that the user's login was good so we can create for them an access token and also a refresh token then we go here and import some utilities so i'm going to do from flask jwt extended import create access token and also create refresh token now i'm going to be talking more about the details of this as we go but right now what we want to do is uh, here once the password is correct you can just have like refresh equals create refresh token. So refresh token takes in an identity. So once we try identity, you can think of the identity as the user. So in this case, we can just pass like the user ID. So you can just pass user.id. Let's also create the access token. So access the identity can still be the user ID. So once we have this, so once we have this, we can now tell the client that, hey, everything went too well on the server. The user is, is who he claims to be. And you can go ahead and maybe redirect them to the homepage and show them their stuff. So here we can just return to Sonify. So in here, we're, we're gonna be sending back the user, but, it, but now we are also gonna be sending the tokens in the user object. So we can pass the refresh and also the access this also sent the name, so username. This is gonna be user.username. And also the email, which is gonna be user.email. All right. So now, if, so now, if we didn't match any user with this email, or if the password was wrong, then we are just gonna be returning wrong credentials. So over here, we will be returning the Sonify wrong credentials. I'm just gonna have an error here, and then we can say wrong credentials. And then for the status code, we're just gonna say unauthorized, so we didn't authorize the user. That's gonna be 401, it's gonna be HTTP 401 unauthorized. Okay, so once we have this, now we can go ahead and test it out. We did things correctly, possibly things should be working. So let's run first run again. So the server is back. So we have an issue here. Uh, oh, we used app dots. This should be up, not app. Okay. Let's run back the server. So we are back. Now if we go back to Postman, which is our testing client, I'm going to keep this one here, but I'm gonna create another request. So this time we're gonna be going to slash login. And if we try to do a get request, you said this is not being handled, but we want to make a post request. We want to make sure that we are sending JSON. So I'm gonna select JSON on here. And then inside here, we want an email and then a password. So I'm gonna use email at app.com. Then for the password, I'm gonna use a password here. So if I try to send this, notice that we get wrong credentials, but if we use this user that we created here, so I'm gonna use this username one, I'm gonna use this email here that we have, and also the password. So for the email, it's gonna be this, the password. So for the email, it's gonna be this. The password is gonna keep password because that's what it is even here. So now if we try to log in, we try to log in to send, and yeah, we have our tokens and we can go ahead and uh, 
authenticate the user and give and with these tokens they can be able to access any other part of our application that is that needs them to be logged in so if i come here uh, where we are sending these tokens so it actually drives the status code here but it's good we already specify our status codes just so it doesn't mess it up at any time so yeah that's how we register a user that's how we give them a refresh token and an access token so in the next video we are going to be talking more about refresh tokens and how to refresh access tokens so thanks guys for watching if this one helped you out give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe i'll talk to you next time